All right, what's up? It's episode three of the podcast. I'm joined again today by Josh. Welcome <laughs> back for Thank good. You. Yeah. For, for now, for good. Uh, I I messaged you. Or did, did no, I do yeah, you were bit? texting me. Yeah. Um, figured while you're still in Michigan, I'm still in Michigan. We might as well just do this together. Got some good feedback. We're now on Spotify. Yeah, I'm really impressed by that. Still aren't on uh, Apple, which I, I got to figure out why. So... Not, not that big of a deal, though, but I was pretty... It's weird to see it on Spotify. No, I it's know. It's like the difference between SoundCloud and Spotify is like super real deal. I but we uh, a lot of people liked it. I, I really like doing it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so do you want to kick it off for me? Go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. Lead us off. Okay, so I have a question. If How much would I have to pay you for you to stay in your bed for two months? <laughs> <laughs> this All is going right. somewhere, too. Okay. okay. <laughs> So I can't move. I get fed. Like how does that? Yeah, yeah. Thing like work? okay. So it's there's a NASA study where they're trying to do like get people to do this, mm-hmm. and like they have a computer screen above them, and like they have a keyboard. Really? You just can't leave your bed. Huh. You get fed the whole nine yards. So how much money? And you can't sit up. No, <laughs> no. You can't leave the bed. Yeah, I don't know. Are you on NASA once you complete it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's a good question. How much money would it take for two months? Yeah. I mean, think about people that like break their legs or not break their legs, but I'm just saying people that go bed rest for two months where they're stuck in a hospital, being on a computer, being fed probably some crazy food might not be the worst thing in the What's world. What's the amount? For two months, I'm trying to think of like even a salary, maybe like seven grand well they're for the study they're paying nineteen thousand. whoa <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a lot I know. that's a lot i feel like i could accomplish some cool things dude i was thinking about it and then i was like that would actually be horrible because like even just a be. day of like sitting in your you bed sweat basically for two months i mean like, you, you might can't sweat exercise just, this is all well, yeah. i'm getting at you can't move no but it's female only, so we might have to make some changes before, before we do that. But the first thing I saw that, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, I'm out of school in a month. That is so funny. Like 19 grand, which... That, for real, actually. That's crazy that they pay that much. That is, that's a lot. Yeah, I don't know what my dollar amount is, but I think it's above 19 grand. So these are just basically, you apply for it, you fill something out, and you try and be on this study. Yeah. Yeah, but you have to be a girl, so I guess... If I wonder what they're trying to figure out. It's I just barely read the article. No, it's no, like no. something with anti gravity hmm. or like artificial gravity. I don't exactly know. I know I know when you're in space you have to work out so hard because your muscles just basically start decaying. Because you don't have the force of gravity with your leg muscles, your arm muscles, all those things, lifting things up don't require the same muscle mass. So your biceps go away, your tri all the legs, wow. everything. What would I be? <laughs> And uh, it was a huge feat when a guy was in space for one year, just because he had to work so damn hard to keep that up. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I like to tell you something I haven't told you yet. Shit. Okay. Um, but I so today I went to my second interview at a company called Zbart, and to fill people in, I applied for a position. This is a the national um, international headquarters of Zbart, which is a car car company so to speak so they do detailing interior interior detailing um, they can do tinted windows they have this shit all sorts of basically all these accessories for your car and their mission statement more or less is we will do everything we can to create your car however you want it to be and so maybe you want it to be the right when it came off the line or you want it to be something you couldn't even imagine and so basically I applied for this video editor position and um I went back this uh, this during the week, this weekend and all that. I interviewed on Monday, and then I interviewed today, which is Wednesday, um, my second interview, and I got a text after my interview today that said, hey Josh, boss loved you, this, that, the other. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna give you an offer. Shit. At 10 a.m. So, Whoa. So I have like 12 hours or so until I figure that out. <laughs> It's just, it's pretty crazy because this, this single offer, this opportunity completely changes the navigation of my life. Yeah. That's, uh, was it, do you think it's going to be bigger than the offer I gave you? (laughs) Is this a (laughs) 17,000? 
Uh, no, no, I, I don't know. I'm, it's really difficult to say. What's real, what's pretty intriguing about the company is they give you a really good 401k. They give you health insurance, dental insurance, vision insurance, uh, just all this crazy what stuff. Is it? I don't know what 401k. So is. and I didn't either. I had to ask my mom. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the way the 401k works is it's like you're investing for retirement. And so you can take out a percentage of your paycheck. So every month, if you're getting it by, it's just so weird to talk month, about retirement. It is. <laughs> I was doing the same thing when I started to yeah. smile. Keep going. Sorry. Um, so you basically take a percentage out, and that adds up. Or you take that out, and then some companies, uh, well, you put it in this four hundred one k, and then they take your money, they invest it, and it, typically it has like a a twelve percent increase rate. And so if you're investing $100, you're going to get $12 annually, if that makes sense. And there's no taxes on this 401k. But what's cool about ZBART is the way they have 50% match for your 401k. So for example, if I put $4,000 throughout the year, they'll give me $2,000 on top of that. Just no questions asked. Is that to like incentivize? investing in your yeah. future and stuff like that uh -huh. and there's more money they can invest in as well and so like so yeah so i put four thousand i get six two thousand so that's six thousand and then maybe they invest and make like five hundred more dollars so it's, it's kind of cool yeah. so i'm putting in four thousand but i might be getting sixty five hundred um but it's interesting because they still haven't offered me and i i don't know it'll be it'll be really interesting to see what that number is yeah that's I'm not going to lie, but like the first part of the 401k, I just kind of blacked out. <laughs> it's just so like hard for me to yeah. understand. Be careful setting that on the table just with the noise. Mm -hmm. And how do you look with the shadow in this camera? Is it pretty good? Mm -hmm. Okay, because there's kind of a shadow on your face. But okay. We're working it out. No, it looks fine. You'll have also, to the noise downstairs is people working out. Sure, sure. So I just figured I'd address the that. But yeah, that's, that's really cool. And weird. This yeah. is going to be funny to look back at. That's like, did you see Mr. Coyle commented on our first, or what did he on say? Our second podcast. Uh, something along the lines of, and this is not like verbatim, just how like we're looking forward and he's kind of looking back. And because we're talking about the beginning of our careers and stuff like that. Definitely. And just to be able to look back at these will be really funny. Like we, we're we laughing about yeah. the first one. If we just get some shitty job. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't go well, then it's like, huh. No, that's a good point. It's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, and just kind of, uh, it's like a, I used to call my, my YouTube channel like a virtual scrapbook. And mm -hmm. it's kind of just like bookmarks of your life, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons I've loved videos so much. It's sure you can have different I don't know, notebook entries or photographs that, oh, that's right, this happened. But when you can look back and see a video of, I mean, our trip, we went to San Diego and that's stuff exactly like that. That's exactly what I was thinking about. And just, boom, you watch that video and everything. You, you remember everything of that trip. Yeah. And that's what I think is so amazing about these videos. The $100 bottle of wine. Yeah, <laughs> that we chugged. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. You um, know what I always think about from that trip is that Uber drive. Yeah, that was like when Uber first came out. Do you remember our first ever Uber you ride? offered us Fiji water. Yeah, <laughs> I, I felt like royalty. I'm like, oh yeah. my gosh, dude, this is amazing. Yeah, that was, and we're like, we don't have to tip him. Yeah. We, we tried to give him money, he gave us it back. He's like, I'm working on a startup. <laughs> yeah. And then, do you remember the other Uber ride? This is the one that I was more talking of. Mm. I Was it the one where you recorded uh, in front of us for like, 30 minutes no i don't remember the super ride no but i do remember that this is a lady it was when we couldn't find an uber so we had to get an uber uh, plot or yeah uber, uber what's the like high class one uber, uber plus X. no 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 xl uber black. black it was called uber black and um no i specifically remember we were going over the coronado bridge from san diego to coronado and it was this lady and we were kind of just she was asking us questions like what are you doing whatever and she's like, and we're like, we don't really know. Like, we kind of want to move here, do this. Don't really know what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, now's the time. Like, you don't have any yeah. mortgage. You don't have kids. You don't have any of these sure. responsibilities other than yourself. And that was like, dang. And now thinking that I'm four years later about to be in that summer between, so, yeah. like, college and real life between then when was high school and college. So yeah. it, that was our senior year. No, junior yes, it was. Year. No, senior, senior year. year. Okay. Cause I got super sunburnt and, uh, yeah. <laughs> had to hug people at my graduation party with like oh. boils on my rib cage. <laughs> Some of us are fair skinned. That's funny. And what's really cool. I'm reading the, um, 
the Navy SEAL book um, I just had in my head and I lost it. Uh, Can't Hurt Me, David Goggins. David Goggins, sorry. Um, I'm reading the David Goggins book, and he's talking about doing his training in Coronado and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. And when I, I told you this before, when I did the run that went around kind of a scenic route of Coronado, and next thing you know, I, I'm kind of coming around towards the end of my run. It ended up being like eight or 10 miles or something. And all of a sudden, these guys are come swimming out of the water, and there's a truck parked on the side. And it wasn't anything, like it was, it was pretty intense. But these guys come around under a bridge, and they swim out of the water, they throw off their fins, and they were doing like this crazy swimming technique where they do three strokes, and then they do some dolphin movements. And these guys come out of the water, just fly out of the water, they throw their um, fins in the back of this truck, throw on shoes, and then just took off running. Next thing you know, I'm running with these guys, <laughs> side by side. And I'm telling you, I ran so much faster when I was next to them. Yeah. And they, they were, some of them were talking to me like, good job, dude, and keep it up, guy. And like, I, it was crazy. I was, and I was young compared to the, um, but I just remember being so, like, just in disbelief. I didn't even really know what was happening. Like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, I, I think I'm next to some Navy SEALs right yeah. now. And then, I, and then I think I ended up, de- or they deviated mm-hmm. off and whatever, but. That was crazy. In Coronado, Coronado was a cool place. Mm-hmm. Really cool place. That running thing reminds me of something yesterday that happened that I didn't tell you about. <laughs> so I went on a run, and I usually run kind of like parallel with the river, um, the, the road Grand River first, and then mm-hmm. like the Red Cedar River. And I crossed paths on the bridge with this little kid who was maybe 5'1", and he was definitely still in high school, and he was hauling. And then he was on the other side of the river, and I was on this side of the river, and we were just going. I could not keep up with him. Dang. And then he looped back around, and, like, the first time we ran past each other, like, just gave a little, like, head nod, mm-hmm. like, how's it going? And then the second time I saw him, I'm like, nice job, buddy. Like, you're doing amazing. <laughs> Every, yeah. Every, and he was so small. That's, like, it wasn't, he didn't have dang. long strides. He was just flying. Dang. Was he built or just No, like he was a dude. little skinny kid dang. who was, like, maybe 5'1". Every time I every time I'm running, I make sure I try and wave at all the runners. Just as like a little community between the two of us. You know, that's funny because I I always I usually just do the head nod or just like a thumbs up, something like that. But for some reason, one time I didn't want to go on a run because my knee was hurting. But I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. And I don't know if I was maybe limping a little bit or something. But the, I ran past this guy that had a huge knee brace on. And he high fived me. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck? Yeah, and funny. then on that same run, next person I saw saluted me. Jeez. And I'm like, no, I feel like a warrior. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. But what do you think about that David Goggins book? I forgot that you were reading it. Yeah. I, I've taken a little break. I'm reading 1984 right now for Book Club. But it's really good. And so he just went through two hell weeks. Mm-hmm. And um, now, now he's like his mom saw him graduate and things like that and i think he's at the point where he's considering like more challenges Mm -hmm. something to test him more yeah i think it's transitioning towards his running part of his career yeah um so that's where i'm at yeah that's that's cool yeah so what do you think about the challenges uh good i i really want to do the sticky note challenge yeah on the mirror yeah i have that and so to fill people in this is a challenge that you pick a couple goals you pick maybe three different things and you talk to yourself in the mirror and you put these challenges on the mirror that says maybe it's I'm gonna run five miles every day this week. Just just something like that. And every time if you don't do it, you talk you talk shit to yourself in the mirror. You tell yourself you better do this, all that. And but it's just having these different goals that I mean you go to your mirror a lot after showering, all that. And so you see these goals almost more often than ever. Mm-hmm. And it was just, uh, that's one thing. I don't have any sticky notes in my house, and I keep forgetting to get them. I have a bunch, like, everywhere. Just remind me to give you some. Okay, yeah, yeah, no worries. I'm not going to give you these because I really uh, like this color yellow. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's something I really got to try. Yeah. I've done is writing ones and and uh, different random ones, but they're mm-hmm. good. They're cool. It's yeah. a very, I don't know, I, it's a cool part of the book. Yeah, I like them. They get worse. It like It's a great idea. It and is. I, the first six of them, I was like, this is amazing. And then they just start getting more and more vague. Yeah. And it was like almost they because they did it with every single chapter. And this person below us is really getting after it, <laughs> <laughs> dropping these weights. <laughs> um, but the uh, they just kind of get worse and worse, and it just kind of bums you out. 
because the first ones were so good it was almost like you should have just done the first six and then kind of just been done yeah because it, it started it, it'll start to feel forced but i mean that sure. all things aside i really really like that book it's uh it's just such an interesting story because his be the beginnings are so sad it's just crazy just like came from nothing came from abusive family had to run away moved to a super racist place in indiana for real and yeah just hearing all that and then just like the working and yeah. just quitting his job and the injuries. even even his depression and his weight gain yeah. his weight loss then gain again it's just like, yeah whoa. that's that's the crazy part is like you start like you think okay you let's say you start at like rock bottom like he had a really bad childhood then you think like oh maybe it's just going to be all up but it wasn't it was just a roller coaster which is a good reminder to yeah. like everyone that like hey you think you're down and out but you're not exactly that's that's especially what i got from it because sometimes you're like dang like I, i'm such a screw up or whatever but then you're like you can you can fix it so i saw you posted on instagram Something along is this the lines. camera still going? Yes, yes. Sorry. Something along the lines of uh, applying for an internship in New York. Yeah, dude. So uh, update on that. So I went on there. I had originally like reached out on the website because they have like a forum of this was the summer internship in 2018. Here's the positions apply here. And um, the average date was like the end of March, beginning of April. So earlier la or later last year, like probably December of 2018, I emailed this guy and said, hey, I'm really interested in the summer internship program. When is it going to be announced? And he said, April 1st. So I put it on my calendar, was all ready. That, that was in my newsletter, by the way, not my Instagram. I haven't got to that, sadly. But Oh, wait. the newsletter. I haven't got to all the links. Oh, good. no, it's fine. But I'm right. just, I was just thinking of when I said that on Instagram. Uh, uh, ah, yeah. it was your newsletter. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's totally fine. But I was just, I was like, huh, I don't remember saying that. But uh, so... April 1st comes around, I'm all excited, and they're like, April Fool's, not, they didn't post anything. So I'm like, oh my gosh, are you serious? So I messaged someone again yesterday, didn't answer, messaged someone else today, they answered. They said, yeah, it'll be open sometime around the end of April, stay tuned. Jeez, so it's like, late. dude, how long can I wait? Yeah. So I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna weigh my options. Tell me a little bit about what this is. Yeah, so you, do you know what Genius is? somewhat so they do like music stuff yeah, um yeah yeah they like bring artists in and they like go over the lyrics of their songs so the first iteration of the company as far as i understand it was just lyrics okay and then they would have the artists annotate on the lyrics and say like oh this is referencing that but oh, then they also had like uh, a community of people that would also annotate so like for example, I could probably become like a verified annotator of like Lil Uzi Vert because I know so much about it. <laughs> like that's pretty funny. Yeah, in his in his music, and there are people that do that. So it's like okay. a forum in that way. Then they just have like normal like forum type stuff. Then they have a really big social media presence. Gotcha. Um, like I said, they have uh, a YouTube channel where they do this really cool thing, where I think it's called Behind the Beat or something like that, hmm. where they go and talk to the producers of a certain song. And that's, I think I sent you the I one think, with uh, me that. Shaq Wes, yep. where uh, Take a Day Trip, yeah, they yeah. like ran the beat one time and that, yeah, that. How it all happened organically. Yeah, it just, it was all one take and then the beat ran off and that's when he was like, fuck, shit, yeah. bitch. And then, but yeah, so that, I would love to get that internship. I hope I do. I hope I even get to apply for it. Yeah, that's it. And thing. yeah, it's, I don't know. So we'll see. It's, it's still in the works, I guess, which is annoying. Mm-hmm. But if I don't get it, that's not the end of the world. Yeah. It's just, I just have to get an internship to get it behind me. Yeah. Because that I need one to graduate. Because if I, if I was graduating and I didn't need it, I would not get an internship. Yeah. No, I don't, totally. I don't uh, really want to be doing that. But it's. It's, yeah. How many credits? How long does the it, it can be anywhere from one to six. Huh. So I could do nine hours a week, which is one, which is a lot for one credit. Um. Yeah, that is kind of a lot. And then you can do up to like 40 or whatever. But yeah, yeah, that is also, if you do more credits, you have to pay for it. Yeah, so I don't which, know why you do more. Yeah, it's if you needed more credits. But it, yeah, it's just a backwards thing that you have to pay for something. And especially if it's unpaid, mm -hmm. then you're paying for the credits but not getting sure. paid. And you know about That's that. That's what I have. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to tell you that twice. But 
that I will say from that Charlemagne book that was an interesting perspective. Sure. And, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I get. Mean. Do you want to tell me? No, no. Go ahead. Okay. So uh, we read. I'm trying to. Oh, it's hashtag Black Privilege by Charlemagne the God. Also another really good book. Also a book club book. But he talked about how un- unpaid internships are, can also be a really good thing, which I agree with. Which he changed my mind on because before I was like, unpaid internships are so stupid. You should never do them. Like. That's just, why would you ever do that? But what he talked about is like, um, value is not only come in the form of like capital of of money Mm -hmm. because you can get these certain connections and learn these certain skills that you won't get a different one. But if you have some just shitty internship that's unpaid, then it's like, okay, that is not really worth it. But for example, I would take this genius internship unpaid, even though it is paid. Mm -hmm. So... And I heard something recently just talking about, I think it, mm, I don't know where exactly I heard it, but it was just basically saying, you got to find something you want to do so badly that you're willing to do it for free. So look at a job like, hey, you know what? Maybe this video editor editor position, I I would do this for like 10 grand a year or 15 grand. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is uh, you would do these jobs, these these hobbies, whatever that might be, Look at the way your work is and say, you know what? No matter what, I would do this even if they didn't pay me. Yeah. And that's kind of a good way. And, and yeah. this person was talking about it's a great way just to look at working and look at your working life. Mm-hmm. Oh, I liked it. It made me like, huh? Because truly, in this video editor position, I feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna take a lot away. I'm gonna learn so much from just being able to be around all these creative people. And even in my interview, they were they were like, so what's what's so important to you about being a part of a team mm-hmm. and one of the things I kept saying over and over was just the simple fact of it's so exciting to be around all these different creative people yeah to be in a, a room where every day we're trying to think of the latest and greatest campaign video idea and just being forced to create and forced to really think on our on our feet and ahead mm-hmm. of the curve I just think it's so exciting to be in a team and and having all those brains sort of become one brain yeah no, I, I agree, and the that kind of brings me to, I'm going to sort of a little bit off topic, but in the, in the same vein of the whole team thing, because that's, I mean, it's fun to do this podcast by myself, but it was so much more fun to do it with you, um, and I mean, I think we have more fun before and after we actually start recording the podcast, yeah. just messing around. Absolutely. And like when we were editing, like... Mm-hmm. We, we could not stop yeah, laughing. Like that's the hardest I've laughed in a while. Agreed. And it's just, it's fun to like work on something with people, especially when it's like a friend. Um, because I've had some experiences and I'm having an experience where (laughs) I'm working with a group of people and it's, I mean, they're, they're nice people, but it's like, we don't really see eye to eye on a lot of things Mm -hmm. and it's not really a project I want to be working on. So then it's a little bit different in, in that case, I would much rather be working by myself. But when it's, I mean, I feel like we see pretty eye to eye, um, during these conversations, like it's not this, it's not difficult and we're not, we understand what we're saying. Yeah, and we're having fun with it. Like, like I said, we're doing this for free. I'm not. Exactly. I'm not paying you. What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is your unpaid internship for no credit. <laughs> no, 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 I know what you mean. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Group project and and um. I wanted to say, are you are you getting a little bit of senioritis? <laughs> Dude, I had a phone That's conversation nice. <laughs> with my mom today, and it's not even like I just don't care about school at all and like it's no secret that first of all i didn't want to come here in the first place and every year come here as in come to college yes go to college period um in the interest waxes and wanes some days i'm like you know what this is pretty cool and some days i'm like why am i here but i mean with with that being said like the whole environment of being with like living with a bunch of my best friends and stuff like that wouldn't trade that for anything but when i want to work on something like this podcast and then I have this class stuff that I'm like, wow, this really does not matter. Yeah. It's just so tough. And I have so much of that stuff going on right now. And I'm like, sort of kind of failing <laughs> a class or two, Dang. but it's just, it's just overwhelming because I want to be working on these things and I can't. And the, I was actually thinking of this today. Cause I feel, I, I had a feeling some question like this was coming mm-hmm. and the, like, I feel on one hand, like with the podcast and like I'm ramping up to start uploading again on YouTube and stuff like that, I feel like my right foot is just slamming on the gas, like let's go. And then because of school and like 
this other stuff, my left foot is just slamming on the brake. Like and I'm just analogy. like smoking the tires. Hmm. Because I really, really want to like put everything into this, into my videos. Like I've been really, um, I have like all these folders of the, like this fit doing this video, then this video leads to this. And I mean, obviously that doesn't mean anything just saying that. No, and no, yeah. I would like to actually follow through on that, but I can't right now. Mm -hmm. like as, as much as I want to and I want to enjoy the college lifestyle I think that's very important and did I talk to you about Sunday I don't believe so so that's what Michigan State won what you did yeah kind of I think you just texted me okay so so yeah I did I work on Sunday at all I don't think I did um, so I originally was going to go watch it at the bar and I got there David left 30 minutes before me and so this is Michigan State Versus playing Duke. Duke yes in the Elite on Eight. Sunday and yeah, thanks <laughs> um, for all of our fans living under rocks, <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> and cool. so Dave left 30 minutes before me to go to the bar and he was like, yeah, I got in, waited 10 minutes. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to moped up there. I'm not going to drink. I'm just going to watch the game with a cool atmosphere. Get there. The line is past 7-Eleven, which is like Dang. super long. Mm -hmm. And I talked to some people afterwards. They waited in line for 90 minutes during the game. Whoa. So I literally saw the line dipped out. Just mm -hmm. moped it back, watched it here. I wasn't even watching the entire game. I was just kind of come in here, work on some homework, do some whatever, sure. go out there, watch the game. And then I was like, whoa, this is a really good game. And I was hooked. And we started watching it, kind of got towards the end. And we're all sitting around, uh, myself, Brad, and Marco. And we're like, I feel like we should get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and so one thing led to another. Marco and I were out on the porch shotgunning. I shotgunned a Truly. Nice. It exploded all in my face. And um, one of my cousins texted me, so you're burning couches yet? So it's like, That's wild. it was a Sunday. I had a lot to do. I emailed my professor, like, how much is this extra credit worth? Will I be able to pass? <laughs> and, That's so funny. and then I just made the decision that, like, you know what? I need to uh, go out and, and enjoy this college experience. Full because, sense. I mean, how, when... In, I mean, never again is the basketball team for the school that I go to going to the Final sure, Four, sure. playing against Zion and Duke that was and winning. Wild. And I will be the first person to say, I didn't think this Michigan State team was going to do anything no. outside of the first two rounds of the tournament. Me either. And I had them losing second round. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I honestly thought they might lose first round. Yeah. But, um, but I'm so happy that they're doing well. And no, it's, it's, it's cool. really cool. Mm -hmm. And to beat that team with two first round there was a statistic that i saw that was uh zion and rj barrett were the first freshman freshman duo to average 20 points i think of all time Jeez. yeah so in order for the cameras to roll for more than 30 minutes you have to pause them so if there's a weird jump in the audio it's because we got up and paused the cameras so this is just a little commercial break but back to it all right i'm gonna uh actually i want to talk to you about basketball Okay. <laughs> and I'm not, this is going further than just the, the intramural stuff. Tell me about your intramural season. <laughs> just overall? <laughs> Why are you asking this? No, no, no. It's, it's, it, I'm just kind of segueing <laughs> so I can talk about something, if I'm being honest. Uh, well, we got to the finals, basically, <laughs> and we got dominated. It was no running clock, anything, but we lost by like 20. And we played on a bigger court than we played, and all of us. <laughs> the court were makes so such a difference. Gassed. The... I, I'm bummed you guys didn't play on Breslin. This God, I was, I was You're really bummed. The choir. I was really bummed to see that. Uh, but no, we played on McGurk in McGurk Arena. Uh, it was crazy. The game before us was the frat uh, finals. Mm -hmm. I I'm not kidding. There was probably like 400 people there. It was insane. Everyone were, leave for your game. All the fr and everybody left. There was probably like twenty after that. Um, but yeah, it was, go Greek. It was bad. We it was just a very demotivating game, and we couldn't we couldn't get within like ten, or we mm -hmm. got within like eight or seven a couple yeah. times, and we just yeah, it was it was shitty. But go ahead. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, for my sick story, no, I've just been I've been really really enjoying basketball a lot recently. Um, obviously winning the championship didn't hurt, Yeah. but just, I like even going to play pickup and it's really weird because I, I, I'm starting to start, starting to think about it more as like a intellectual game 
and kind of like thinking about why, like why I mess up and just because I can't remember where I was, where this was happening. But just hearing some, like, talking about how, like, usually when you're thinking too much, that's not a good thing. Mm-hmm. And thinking about that on the court is like, oh, my gosh, that's all I do. Yeah. It's like, because right when I think, holy shit, I might miss this layup, what am I doing? A- adjusting how I'm laying it in. And, it, like, there's, there, I actually had this moment in the championship game where I got the ball at the three-point line. And championship yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Which we won. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We actually have our banquet tomorrow night at eight. If you wouldn't mind staying and taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> um, but no, I got the ball and like faked right, dribbled left, like did a move and like pulled up from just inside the three point line, contested jumper like off the dribble, switched it. Just automatic. I didn't even think about it. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that is. Yeah. That is like so different than I'm how like how I usually play where it's just like trying well, to think about everything in my head. That, I mean, think about like why people have shooting spots and shooting drills where you go to the top of the key every for a hundred rep, repetitions you do a fake right one dribble left shot. It's so that when you get the game automatic. that you don't even consider thinking about it. It's just this is how I've done it and I don't even think and I yeah. shoot that and and I mean you just kind of told exactly what that was. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's a part of a lot of sports, I would say. Yeah, no, I think it's a part of life. Cause yeah. when you're thinking too much, you're just getting you, it, it, cause when you're thinking too much about the shot, it affects the shot. I just sent a spit rocket <laughs> flying there. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's just weird. Cause it, it's, I was definitely doing that, but I didn't even realize it was like affecting my game. Mm-hmm. And I also like, I played last weekend and it, I would get the ball. I'm like, I'm gonna drive to the basket right now and shoot it, regardless of what happens. And not like not every single time. Like if I had an open lane, but like yeah. just having that menta- mentality when I would dribble in is something I never have had. And just like we were talking about in book club, like applying things you learn mm-hmm. from games or sports or whatever, totally. and applying that to life. Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty cool how we're at the point in our lives where we're in pretty much the best shape of our lives. Mm -hmm. Like physically, I mean, probably the next two, three, four years will you get even stronger and this, but we're kind of hitting our peak, which is pretty awesome. I mean, you watch these professional athletes that are 18 and, and we're 22 and it's just, I don't know. It's a, it's a cool point. Yeah. I think I could be, I think I could take Zion. (laughs) Yeah. I, I told you how I was been riding the Peloton. I haven't talked to you about it at all. Yeah. It is incredible. Um, so to fill in the the Peloton, um, it is a elliptical bike that you're doing. Uh, it's is that the right name, term for it? It's just a bike, a stationary, a stationary bike, bike yeah. not an elliptical bike. It's a bike cult. Um, <laughs> so you have this huge screen in front of you, maybe like a 16 inch. Screen. Is it that big? It's actually it is big. Good speakers on it. It's a very stable bike. And I mean, my dad, he, he get, got me all set up. He measured my hip to how high to put the seat. And there's all, I mean, you put on bike shoes, you, it's the whole nine yards and you're connected to this bike. And so you start up, you have your own profile, you have all that stuff. People give you high fives during your bikes, but basically you go, you pick classes. You have People all give you high fives. It's virtual. <laughs> um, Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a weird laugh. Um, so you, it's all virtual. And so, yeah, you go on and you go, okay, I'm going to do a 20 minute ride. I'm going to do a 30 minute ride. I'm going to do a 45 minute ride. And so there's all these instructors that you can say, I'm going to sign up at 6 a.m. And I've got to, I'm signed up tomorrow at 6 a.m. I got to show up for class. But basically it's just in your basement and you just log on. But it what if is you don't so, show up? I'm, I don't think anything happens. There's got to be some penalty, like you like uh, it posts on your Facebook page. I'm a lazy bitch. <laughs> so, but anyways, I mean, you can go to classes that are literally live, and it's imp- so impressive how good these instructors are. Of they are working just as hard as you are, but they're talking the entire time. Yeah, and that's I'm just, crazy. I'm just, I can't even catch my breath. I did a high intensity interval one today, high at H I I T, and I was dead. And, but all I'm saying is it is like a really fun way to work out. I mean, I, one was like a electronic and like hip hop one. Mm-hmm. And it's so cool because these electronic songs, 
you are biking exactly to the beats. Mm-hmm. And they pick the songs for those reasons. And I'm singing along. I Spotify, you can connect your Spotify to the Peloton. You can add it right then. And so I'm just jamming to this beat and going to the... And so all I'm trying to get at is you work out for 45 minutes, 30 minutes. You can even do like arm weight workouts. Mm-hmm. And it is super enjoyable. And I think my 30-minute workouts, I burned around like... 500 550 calories Mm -hmm. and then my 45 minute was like 750 calories and sure it's brutal do not get that twisted but it's really fun yeah super low impact too yeah yeah yeah. um and my i tell you my ass is sore (laughs) yeah you want no gooey seats yeah maybe um do they ever have you stand up mm -hmm. so that's what's cool there's all the yeah you do stand up then back to sit down i did one yesterday where it would be eight seconds up eight seconds down eight seconds up eight seconds down and it's just so much different muscles when you're Mm -hmm. up and yeah they do a really really good job i'm honestly so impressed by the instructors it's it's sweet (laughs) what's her name uh i my favorite was uh it was emma lovewell for those riders out there <laughs> ride on yeah um <laughs> speaking of virtual what do you miss the most about video games i would say what video games have taught me most in life is that when you find an enemy it means you're going the right way <laughs> All right, uh, this is over with. We're good. <laughs> uh, um, what do, well, I still play a... No, I don't play it. No, I don't. Um, what do you miss most about RuneScape? Hmm. Besides body and cheating. Well, like... <laughs> <laughs> I'll, like even I, I don't necessarily want to say for RuneScape, though, but I miss how good I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'm getting at is... <laughs> Like, I'll play, like, Call of Duty today, or I'll play, maybe if it's even, I don't know, I'll play Call of Duty, let's say, and I'm just <laughs> not that good anymore. Yeah. And what I'm trying to get at is, like, I, I, all I'm saying, I would dominate back in the day just because I put so much time into it. And when I pick up the oh, sticks. Oh, you're telling me. When I pick up the sticks today, it's like, dang, I wish I had that talent. Um, but also going on what I missed Back when we would play Xbox 360, like Modern Warfare 2, those games, when you would you would hop on after school and you've got like 15 friends that literally you're just chatting with for the next five hours. Yeah. And just, I would say, a lot of like the bonds that, you, mm-hmm. that I, I made on Xbox. That was a cool part. And it's hard for me to say because I don't think I would, I just don't want to talk to people like that on Xbox anymore. I would rather call them on the phone mm-hmm. and do something different. So yeah. I don't know. It, it's tough to say what I miss. I don't think I could necessarily recreate what I miss. Hmm. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. No. Um, How about uh, you? Uh, what do I miss the most? Yeah, just that like social connection, um, especially because like I had so many like international friends, especially like when you guys were playing high school basketball and you weren't playing as much. Mm. Uh, I made a lot of friends that are in different corners of the world and we would talk in, in Skype chats and everything. I mean, I would come home from school to 400 Skype messages mm. and it's like, that's, I don't know. And you just yeah. learn so much about the world and other people and stuff like that. And you still talk to these people, right? Some of them. To a yeah. 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 But it, it's much more brief and not, like I said, those long conversations. Cause I mean, think about the amount of time that you and I spent exactly. talking on Xbox. No, I know. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that, that, that was cool. I have, I have another rapid fire question that I, I can't remember if I heard this or if I, or if I came up with it or what it was, but if you had to, and it's at, at this point today, like Josh 22, hopefully getting an offer or getting an offer from Z Bart mm. six or seven figures to my oh. understanding. <laughs> seven. I love it. Oops. Um, Scrooge McDuck. And so if you had to write it, Otter, uh, <laughs> I just forgot, autobiography, what would the title be? For my life thus far. Yeah. Whoa. I thought this was a good question. Yeah. Mm, I, I this, up. this is tough. I don't, I don't know if I can answer that in a sitting. Do you have something that you thought about, just to give me a little bit more time? Um, I, I thought of a few different ones. Um, one that was, uh, what was the one? 
Please shut up. No. <laughs> yeah. I I can't remember what it was right now, but I don't know. I mean, I don't, you don't even have to answer it. It's just an interesting thing to think about. Maybe. You know what I just thought of? What? Double pits to chesty. And I don't know why. Well, dude, my <laughs> legs are so sweaty right now. <laughs> I, you know, about 10 minutes into the podcast, I just did a crazy hand movement there. <laughs> but <laughs> your shirt, I was like, dude, that guy's going to be so sweaty. So are you so, are you pitted out? No, no. That's good. Um, oh, I was just going to. Your, your titles? No, no, it was something else after that that I was just thinking. No, that's so. something to consider, though. I definitely like, I'll sit, I'll sit around for the next, I don't know, week or so, and kind of, I'll text you back. Yeah. I'll think of something. Yeah. Well, don't tell me. Tell the fans. <laughs> and actually, you know, I do want to say something about the fans. It's we have. It's like a hundred and forty something views on this, cool. the previous episode of this podcast, and that's a lot of people. It is. I mean, it, it's not a lot compared to like the Joe Rogans of the world, but it's like, dude, if if that kind of stresses me out, that's funny. <laughs> like, no, it's a little bit of a responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> but that's after one episode, so like, uh, I don't know. It, it is what it is. I don't know about. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily stressed. No, I'm just saying stressed out that that this many people will hear that. Oh, like, that's. I'm not. Cute. I don't feel like obligated. That's what I. Okay. Yeah. No. That's there's no. I, I don't feel any sort of obligation. I just feel like. Dang, that many people are listening to us. I mean, I guess I don't like some people might just click on, click off, but yeah, and a lot of people really like the video format. Mm-hmm. It's which, 2019, baby. That's what, <laughs> that's what people love. It's 2019, but the vision's 2020. I <laughs> I have a question. Um, I was I I considered this a month or so ago, um, and I think it's an interesting thing to look back every month of 2019. But if you were to say thus far, what's your biggest takeaway from the last now four months or three months, not four, three months of 2019 thus far, is there anything that you'd say, oh, I've definitely done this or I've learned this thus far? Yeah. Um, something to do with meditation. I don't exactly know what, but the, I was telling Brad the other day, or yesterday actually, the, the guided meditation was, he, he's like, hello and welcome to this day of whatever, and he goes, don't move. And you're not supposed to move for the entire 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And for me, dude, that was like, what? Because usually like I do move around a little bit, just kind of readjust. And without doing that, it was so hard. And getting back more towards your question, it's just... The the thing that I've realized in the past four months is that I am so good at just like ramping myself up and stressing myself out about like the littlest random things and not even realizing it and just kind of taking a step back, whether that's meditation or just kind of like metaphorically, like just looking at yourself in the mirror and going, dude, why am I, I'm running uh, like I'm slamming on the gas pedal on the brakes right now and my RPMs are just redlining. Why? <laughs> like it, you don't have to be like this. And yeah, that's probably what I've learned in the past four months is like, dude, just chill. Work life balance. Not, not even that. Just chill. Like, mm-hmm. but I mean, so much easier said than done. Yeah. 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 No, no, I like that. What about you? Um, I think, yeah, no, my, my big takeaway. And I, I think part of this came when I left for Europe, when I, when I studied abroad in Europe, a lot of my daily habits sort of got pushed to the side. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe it was me thinking culture shock and just wanting to like kind of freaked me out being there and, and stuff along those lines. And when I got back this year, I assumed that, okay, I used to write my journal daily. I mm-hmm. assumed that I used to read a lot more and I assumed that these things would just boom, they would start again. And they didn't. Yeah. And I went through this weird period where I couldn't get consistent on anything. And I was like getting so angry at myself that I I can't feel, I'm, I can't do this and I I can't feel satisfied because I can't accomplish these things like I should, or I expect myself to, or you used to, or I used to. And so my biggest takeaway, and I've gotten a lot better the last uh, month, especially is, is that habits are not easy to create. And they take, yeah. they take a month to, to start to feel normal. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that, that, uh, that's what I would say is habits are not easy. Yeah. And it's, it's never ending. Cause like I've had that same experience where 
uh, maybe at some point in the summer or just at any time. Sure. And you go like, especially maybe when I was in and out with meditation or just writing or anything, and you realize, oh my gosh, I haven't done that in three weeks. Definitely. Or I haven't woke up as early as I said I was going to in yeah. this this amount of time. And it's, it's so much easier to fall off than it is to stay on track. And that is just, that overwhelms me. Yeah. But it's also like just more of a reason to not fall off. And mm-hmm. like that's why I really like having that thing. Um, as you can see, Sunday I was drunk. <laughs> um, that's funny. But just just having it visually right there, where I'm kind of gonna shame myself if it's if there's a bunch of red up there. Mm-hmm. And like like looking up there at all those green little arrows that I have, I'm like hell yeah! Like sure. I did everything I was supposed to do today, um, and that feels good. But no, I totally get that with the with the habits and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it should be a good year though. It's it's been an exciting year already. It's been very intense and interesting, and life changing and altering. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's curious because I mean we're gonna look back and say, twenty nineteen might have been the, personally thus far twenty nineteen might have been the most influential year of my life. Interesting. Just in the sense of there's been so many. Th- Things that have happened, and personally, the last month, that have completely changed how I thought my life was going to be, mm-hmm. or how my road was going to be. Yeah. And so, we'll see. Yeah, stay tuned. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think, do you have anything else that, we, that you want to touch upon before? No, we... and I'm scared. I don't want to necessarily go too long, and then we can't, I guess end we can it. turn them on and on. Yeah. Try, but, Should um, we just end it? I'm good with that. 